The dark side of the internet, where criminals, whistleblowers, and hackers alike convene to debase the reality of so-called civilized society. Today, we're unpacking preconceptions like this to give you a little more insight into the truth about the dark web. <laughs> Most people think of the dark web as some kind of mysterious hive for deprived criminal activity occupied by the most radical of underground hackers. If you've looked into this at all, you've probably seen this picture. The same kind of people who share images like this also go around insisting that the dark web is 96% of the internet. And then they make some sweeping conclusions about what must be the state of the internet and indeed humanity in general. If such a hefty proportion of what we understand to be the internet is in fact not. So let's just get one thing very clear. The deep web and the dark web are two very different things. The deep web is a term used to mean anything not indexed by a search engine. I.e. if I type it into Google, it should not come up. Or at least I shouldn't be able to access it without logging in or paying a fee or something. As we know here in the Rainbows family, this is not always the case. Sometimes people do leave things that should not be indexed by a search engine just out in the open. But no matter. Point is, Think about that. Think about how large of a percentage of the things you do on the internet every day require a password. The data from things like email accounts, banking information, private social media accounts. That represents a huge fraction of our interaction with the internet. The dark web is an entirely different thing and a much smaller portion of the internet. Which makes sense, since generally those on it have some technical knowledge and some need to browse anonymously, making them a smaller segment of the population of internet users, not the majority. So how do you get there? You use TOR. TOR stands for the Onion Router, meaning it is a browser that uses a technique called onion routing to pass data between servers, aka websites, and clients, aka your computer or other internet connected device. You, the client, and the site, the server, are thus communicating directly back and forth, making sure their packets of information each address to one another. That's the key part though. Because the connection is just back and forth, and all those packets have to be addressed to you and the server, anyone who intercepts those packets, either by sniffing your network, or monitoring the server, or a man in the middle attack somewhere in between, can see who you are, where you went, and in some cases, even what you did while you were there. Onion routing takes your packets and, rather than passing them directly to the server, encrypts them and then begins passing them along to the server through a series of nodes. At each node, your packets receive another layer of encryption, which can only be peeled away using the key stored at that node. That's why it's called onion routing, because of all the layers. With this protocol, no one node has all the information about the entire path. It only knows about the node to which it must send the packet, i.e. the node on either side. It has no idea where the packet came from, where it is ultimately going, nor can it read it because it will already have been encrypted before arriving. Thus, anyone sniffing at any point in the path would need the keys from the entire thing to decrypt your traffic. But another great thing about this protocol is that it doesn't add any length to your message. When encrypting, it keeps a standard length no matter what, meaning it's impossible to tell by looking at the message how many times it's been encrypted. So they wouldn't even have a sense of how long the path is. Pretty cool, right? Well, it makes sense that it is because it was actually invented by the US government with all their US government funding. Tor was created on September 20th, 2002 by computer scientists Roger Jingledine and Nick Mathewson. I really want to have said that name correctly, not just because I value accuracy, because I really hope that's his actual name. You go Jingledine. But anyway, the majority of the funding for Tor came from the U.S. Naval Research Library. It should be pretty clear why that particular group would be interested in anonymous protected browsing, but it should also be pretty clear why they decided to open it up for use by ordinary citizens. Think about it. If someone detected a connection using the onion routing protocol, and there was only one group in the world who used that, you would instantly know who it was from. The government had to open it up to everyone to essentially cover their own tracks. Thus, in 2004, the Naval Research Library released the code for Tor under a free license, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation started funding Dingledine and Matthewson to continue its development. In December of 2006, Matthewson, Dingledine, and five others founded the Tor Project, a nonprofit organization to help maintain the network. But don't let that fool you. It is still mostly funded by the US government. So okay, there's your Tor history lesson. To get on the dark web, you'll need to first install Tor. But wait, if all the sites are not indexed, even if you have Tor installed, how do you find anything? Indeed, there is no dark Google. As we said, by definition, the sites are not indexed. You can't just open up Tor and then search for only dark web links because Tor isn't only a dark web browser. In fact, many people use Tor just for their regular browsing on the internet to keep their data safe and their browsing anonymous. To get to any site on the dark web, you have to know the .onion link you're going to beforehand. 
and then open it in Tor. There are pages like the hidden wiki that keep a rolling record of known sites, but because of the nature of the dark web, these things change or get taken down all the time. So many will be broken when you try to access them. You gotta know what you're trying to find. And so finally, what can you find on the dark web? Because this question seems to imply that you wanna go, I'm gonna preface my answer with this. If you don't need to go, don't. There are plenty of videos out there telling you what is on the dark web. Please consider this one of them. It has been made with the intention of telling you what is there so you don't put yourself at risk by attempting to find out for yourself. I will also proceed this answer with the safety guidelines you must follow as a dark web user. One, use a VPN in addition to Tor. The more layers of protection you have, the better. Make sure the browser itself and the system on which it is running are always kept up to date. Never go full screen. In a place where identity is the most valuable currency, any information about you or your machine can and will be harvested. Going full screen can reveal your screen resolution, which is information about your device, generic as it may seem. It also makes it easier for malware to be downloaded to your device in the background without you taking notice. Don't type directly in sites. Your typing speed and pattern are very unique to you and can be used to identify you if they're being monitored. Type in a text editor and then copy paste if you're going to type. But actually, my biggest advice, don't type in the sites at all. If you're engaging with the sites, you're making yourself vulnerable. Most of them will either have you engaging in illegal activity or inputting information into a honeypot. Engaging with people in chat rooms or to arrange business or whatever honestly often puts you at the most risk. Social engineering or phishing tends to be what gets people to reveal information about themselves in the dark web. No amount of onion routing can protect you if you just give your information away. And also keep in mind, Tor has vulnerabilities like everything else. You never think you're safe enough. There was a major leak in the past. Look it up. So, all that said, what can you find on the dark web? Pretty much everything. Again, think of the reasons people would have for needing something like onion routing. Every nefarious activity has a storefront on the dark web, from red rooms to trafficking of all kinds, to forgeries, to cleanup services. It also has some really positive aspects. It's widely used by whistleblowers trying to communicate with authorities or journalists without compromising their identities. People living in countries or situations where their internet is heavily restricted use it to access media and communities from which they would otherwise be restricted. There's actually big collections of banned books on the dark web. And there's even dark web radio stations. Because it's often used to circumvent country-specific restrictions, it also means that it'll change a lot depending on what language you're browsing in. Russian dark web? is awesome, dude. Not just because of the services offered, but because of the, shall we say, straightforward tone. No bullshit on Russian dark web, fuka. But again, think about the history of this thing. Tor was literally created by, and is still mostly funded by, the US government. That's not to imply they're capable of having any kind of real control over it. It's way too big and powerful for that. But it does mean they've been with it since the beginning, and their agents are firmly integrated in trying to use it to their advantage, or in covering crime syndicates who might be using it to do business. Look up Silk Road for more information about the effect of this on dark web users. So a lot of what you'll find on there, again, is undercover agents running honeypots to catch criminals, which you could stumble into when you're looking into the site as a joke. Basically, just keep this in mind. There are people on the dark web whose lives depend on their enemy, and if you become a threat to that, they will destroy you. If you're browsing the dark web as a tourist, not knowing where you're going, not knowing how to protect yourself, these people do, and they will own you. Most who use it, use it because they must. Consider what that type of need will drive a person to do. I say again, if you're thinking of going just to find out what's there, I just told you what's there. So that's no longer your reason. You will now need a new reason. And when you find it, just consider if it is worth your safety or your freedom. This video is made in partnership with Grizzly Shield Services at Intent Solutions Group. Truly one of the most brilliant teams of people I have ever encountered and one which I am deeply honored to be a part of. Also, if you came from TikTok or the Discord server, this special hello is for you. And if you didn't, please go follow me on TikTok because we are so close to a million and it's literally gonna bother me until we get there. Like, it's gonna irk me until we accomplish this goal. So please go. I love you guys. Stay safe. Till next time. I leave my window open, pretend you're coming inside. Can't fix what isn't broken, can't miss what isn't.